Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Well, you've got yourself an air compressor that uses oil to lubricate the air pump. Well, do you have to use what the manufacturers recommend? That's full synthetic, non-detergent air compressor oil? Or can you use just regular motor oil? What's the difference? Stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Recently, we upgraded our oilless air compressor to an oil lubricated compressor. And we'll tell you all about that in another episode, how we like it. So far, we're loving it. But one of the things that came to mind right away is, do you really have to use this kind of dedicated uh, non-detergent air compressor oil with these kinds of compressors? Or will a good motor oil work just as well? Well, as it turns out, it really does matter. It's not just a gimmick by the manufacturers to sell you more expensive oil. And this is more expensive. Uh, this is November of 2023. This runs about $14 or $15 for 16 fluid ounces or 473 milliliters. And you know you can get a quart of good synthetic oil uh, with moderate viscosity. This one here, uh, for instance, this viscosity is 5 weight 30 uh, for a broad range of operating conditions. You can get it a lot cheaper than nearly 14 or 15 bucks per, um, per 16 ounces. So why the price difference and why is this important? Well, it turns out for a couple of reasons. Number one, the viscosity of these are right for the operating conditions in an air pump. It keeps uh, things lubricated during the initial startup. And this is especially important if that compressor is being used in cold conditions. You've got out in a garage or an unheated shop that needs to be warmed during the time you're working in it. But one of the first things you turn on is your compressor. And if the compressor is really cold, you got to make sure the oil's in place and all the lubricated surfaces or the areas that need lubrication from the get-go. So right viscosity is the first reason that you would want to make this your choice for your compressor. Number two, this is a non-detergent oil versus most of motor oils are now detergent. And you go, well, why does that matter? Because I would think detergent would actually help keep things cleaner. And it's not actually just laundry detergent or something like that. It's an agent that keeps things in suspension. So a little bit of a difference between the two types of, um, of operating conditions. On a combustion engine that this type of motor oil is used for, Ignition occurs on the top half of the engine, that is on the top surfaces of the piston. And there's a little bit of residual of the fuel burn off of carbon that builds up. And so that carbon ends up in the lower half past the rings of the piston through normal operating of the engine. And that's why you'll see as oil ages while it turns dark, it's usually carbon buildups. Well, what the detergent is doing is keeping it in suspension so it doesn't build up in any area of the engine and you get a large uh, piece of carbon buildup and then all of a sudden it lets go, uh, clog somewhere in the engine in an oil galley or elsewhere and causes problems. So detergent oil is there. Now in an air compressor pump, the compression is driven the other way around, whereas Pistons are driven up and down from the top with ignition in a fuel-driven engine. When you're using an oil pump in a compressor, it's the other way around. There is a pulley with a fan that is driving the crankshaft backwards. And what's happening, when I say backwards, I mean differently than the other type of engine. And what's happening is the compressed air is produced by intake on one half of the head, sealing off, and as the piston rises, it presses the air out into the compressor tank. So there is no combustion happening, therefore you don't end up with uh, a lot of carbon. But something else happens in an oil pump uh, where you are using it for your compressor, and that is when you take 
moist air, even that has a little bit of humidity in it, and you compress it, it's going to squeeze the water out of it. Well, where does that water go? Three places. One, back into the oil crankcase and around the pistons itself in the pump. Number two is into the tank itself, the storage tank. And number three is in the air that's blown out. So that water, if it gets to be a significant amount, really causes problem in all three areas, rusting out a tank, fouling up paint finishes or messing up tools. But in the oil pump, it can lead to rust. And if there's water that is being kept in suspension because of the detergent type of oil, then that water is coating the inside and water is not nearly as good a lubricant as this oil is. So you don't want that oil to have water in suspension. That is called emulsification. And if you're thinking, I'm not familiar with emulsification, that's where you get oil and water to mix together. But I bet you are familiar with emulsification. Let me show you. If you've ever enjoyed, no, this is not an ad for Olive Garden Italian dressing, but if you've ever enjoyed good Italian dressing or made your own, you're familiar with emulsification. That's where you try to get oily, substances to mix with water-based substances. The only way you can keep the two in suspension together like it is in this commercial product is to use some kind of agent that stops the two from separating out from each other. But if you've done some of your own type of salad dressings that use oil and vinegar, you know darn well they separate out and you have to shake them vigorously to beat them together to get them to blend. Well, in a similar way, that's what's happening inside the oil pump where you have water that is now in the oil and it's being beat by the crankshaft, um, the, the connecting rods, all that to the pistons. And if that water is not separating out, it'll now emulsify the oil and you can tell it by the oil turning really milky white. So what happens when you're using this? The water drops to the bottom of the sump and is drained off in the next change, along with little minute particles of worn metal as the engine or the pump polishes itself through operation. So this is key for correct operation. If you'd like to see our experience and our thoughts on that new DeWalt DXC M303 compressor we bought, check out the video right there and you'll just kind of get a walkthrough of some of the key features and our initial impressions. And while you're at it, check out this other video that YouTube thinks is perfect for you. And we'd love it if you'd watch it too. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay taking care of business with that new air compressor.